Welcome in to the Crypto Bros Podcast. I am the crypto, I am the crypto bull god. And I am the crypto bringer. I did the clap for you, you didn't clap. I appreciate that. Thank you for doing the clap for me. I don't do the clap during the podcast, it's just the TA videos. This is the record. This is the recorded on Saturday. Yes, this is what we do on a Saturday. Saturday, October 9th, 2021, released on Sunday, October 10th, 2021, Crypto Bros Podcast. You can find me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and TradingView at Crypto Bull God and Crypto Bringer. You can find me on Twitter at CryptoBringer. And I would like to point out that we are releasing the podcast on the day of the birth of our mother tomorrow. Yeah, it's pretty October crazy, 10th. right? Yeah, October 10th, 1010. It's an easy birthday to remember. So funny, funny, fun fact. So I'm bad with birthdays, but it's very easy to remember birthdays uh, in our immediate family because my brother's is on the 17th. My dad's is on the 17th, <laughs> mine is on the 7th, and my mom is 10-10, so it's very easy to remember. So, yeah. Now so your sister-in-law's? December 22nd. So, oh, um, right. I'm very bad with birthdays. That is just a fact about me. I'm bad with names. I'm bad with birthdays. Yeah, I just don't remember. Yeah, I, I really am just bad with it. Does it mean? Does it mean that I don't love and care for the people whose birthdays uh, I forget? That has nothing to do with it. I'm just very bad at keeping track. Before we get into the bulk of the podcast, if you could please like the podcast, drop a comment. All these things help with the YouTube algorithm, and it also helps to ensure that we're going to continue uh, to produce content moving forward. So let's get into things. So um, today's uh, podcast is a actually bonus edition. We're going to be getting into some topics we talked about from the prior podcast. So I'm very excited to get into this because a lot of the things that I'll be sharing and asking Crypto Bringer to keep me honest in terms of if I'm making any sense um, is my bread and butter. It's TA, it's technical analysis. And so I'm going to attempt to explain the significance of certain things and explain it in a way that anyone listening should be able to understand and appreciate in terms of the significance of uh, technical analysis and kind of how it plays into cryptocurrency. But before we get into that, I have a great story to share with everyone um, before we get into some of these questions. So right before we started recording this podcast, as some of you know, the crypto bull goddess was visiting, uh, coming from northern Florida to southern Florida. And so before she took off to travel back to where she was going today, she was supposed to be leaving today. You know, I said to her, you know, you're supposed to check certain things on your car on a long trip just to make sure because she's doing a four hour car trip. So I said, you know, there's certain things you got to check your oil, your tires, just make sure everything's good. So I checked her tires and lo and behold, one of her tires was half of the um, amount of pressure that should have been in her tire. Her The PSI was half of what it should have been. So... I filled it up, but uh, came out a couple hours later and it was lower. So we got someone out here to uh, fill up. I paid someone to come out and fill up her tire or plug her tire for her and get it resolved, which is great. Great peace of mind for me because I got unnecessarily stressed over it. So we, we got that situation fixed. Just wanted to know she was okay. Uh, drive back. And uh, something great came out of it. So the guy that I was talking to, really chill guy who came out and uh, fixed the tire, I was telling him... Um, about this channel, about crypto bros, about uh, the crypto bull god, and, and kind of have been in the space for a while. So we connected on that, and uh, I gave him my information, and hopefully I have a new follower. So I just said, you know, just a regular average person who's been in the market for a while, and, you know, my brother and I do a podcast, and I'm doing my own thing as well, and um, I'm just looking to help people out. So it was great to, out of that opportunity, you know, out of the sort of stressful event to get her tire fixed so that she can leave tomorrow and, and to know that she's okay, something good came out of it. So I was able to connect with someone um, and bring them into the crypto, the crypto world. That is, uh, that's, that's good news. I it like is that. good news, I right? Like that. that's, yeah. that's, that's something positive. I, uh... I want to share something a little, a little different. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the crypto babe and I were over at the old mother and father's place tonight to uh, celebrate. Thank you, crypto babe. I now have my rum and diet soda drink. I appreciate that. Very nice. Um, so what? What? Uh, 
what what hap what what transpired was something that actually embarrassed me. I, I just didn't know what to say. I put my head down because I, I I literally I had no words for it. My parents have, our parents have this dog, and we, mom and dad have always had dogs, but they've always been big dogs. And our father said, "I'll never have a small dog." So we were always we always had German shepherds, golden retrievers, greyhounds, that sort of thing. Now they have, I I, what is it? What is, what type of breed is that dog? It's like Yorkshire, a, it's a Yorkshire something, isn't it? It's a terrier. It's a, it's a terrier breed. It's yeah, breed. it's the so, size of a football or smaller. Yeah, base, basically, <laughs> and it's becoming quite a chunk of monk. It, it, it's, it's, it's getting a little chunky. Yeah. So he, he uh, you know, he barks, all that stuff. You know, he doesn't eat when he should. So they yes. try to reinforce this dog when he eats. Oh, God. They cheer him. Yeah. Now I don't mean I, I they said they were gonna do this and they did. He ate all his dry food, mixed in with some of the, 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 the meat that they put in there, but apparently some of this food had like specific vitamins in there, I guess he needs. And he ate them. Oh my god. So what they then proceeded to do was stand around him and clap and cheer. Yay! <laughs> and I'm watching this, and I've seen it before, and it, it, it just, it floored me the first time I saw it. I'm watching our father do this, and I know no one knows our father, but he was quite the stoic man who oh would never... Oh my god, yes. He has changed never, over the years drastically. He's lost all the testosterone. It's all out of his body now. <laughs> he has all the Sorry, estrogen. Dad. You're listening to this. Sorry. Uh, well, they haven't listed the episode two yet. That should be fun. I warned them that... They have busy lives. If, yeah. yeah, they have very busy lives. They're active people. They're out and about. <laughs> so they're, they're, cheering, they're cheering and clapping, and the dog's running around, jumping up and down, barking loud. I, I just I put my head down on the dining room table, and I just started shaking my, my head, and the crypto babe just starts laughing and rubbing my back because she just knew. She just knew the insanity that was there. And, and yeah, that's what happened. And they... They then reward him with a, another treat, and he runs into the living room and starts chowing down on it. And I just said, "This is, this is asinine." I, I don't. I, you're cheering like if the dog doesn't eat, the dog doesn't eat. He, he's gonna be hungry then. He'll learn to eat. <laughs> no, no, no. We gotta clap and cheer. So anyway, that that was my funny, embarrassing story that I hope to God I never see again. Yeah, I uh, witnessed that firsthand recently when I was home. For all those who have been following me for just even a couple months now on YouTube or even Twitter, I posted a video actually with mom and dad. I posted a video with mom and dad. So I was home recently in July. It was great to see everyone. You know, you, um, the crypto babe, uh, mom and dad, <laughs> who I haven't seen. I almost said her name there in a second. I know. I know. It, it, it took me a second. It kind of came out awkwardly because I was like, you and Crypto Babe. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and no, it was great to see everyone, but I did witness the hand clapping and celebration that took place when the dog ate. Yes, I it, did see that. It's, 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 it's yeah. I, I don't know how else. To, I, I can see it from mom, but dad? Like, really, dad? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so... We, so as everyone knows, this is a bonus podcast discussion. And yes. being at my yes. parents, yes. this this really, my mom questioned why we were doing it again, another podcast so soon, <clears throat> and I said we were, it's a bonus one, and I said we we're explaining some, some terms, and she said, she asked me what terms, and I, I listed them off, and our father's response was, what are those? Why, why are they important? My mom responded with, well, that's why they're doing the show. So exactly. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. are people out there that just, you know, like me, I, I truly don't understand what half of these things mean in depth mm -hmm. and would like to understand it a little more. So yeah. with that, I think we should just move into the number one topic. I mean, we're talking about key buzzwords, you know, in the industry that we're hearing about. And the first one that I would always hear you talking about you and, and, and many others that I, I see and, and read about the SMA, the simple moving average. So crypto bull god, CBG, what is this and why why do I why are we constantly hearing about it and why is it so important? Yes, the simple moving average. And without going into a tangent, let me just kind of uh, take a step back and really quickly explain that um, what we're getting into is just term, some terminology associated with technical analysis. And so what we're hoping to gain out of this 
is to um, fully illustrate what technical analysis really is and why it's important touching on a few key points because I want everyone listening to this, okay, both of us want everyone listening to this to walk away and understand that fundamental analysis is very different from technical analysis. And I actually said on the last podcast, um, actually, I might have said this on the CBG podcast. No, I think I said this on the CBG podcast that came out a couple days ago. I said one of the most beneficial things you could actually do given the opportunity that exists within cryptocurrencies right now is to understand both the fundamentals and the technicals. If you only know one, I don't think it serves to maximize the potential from an investment perspective that you can gain out of this market. So I think for everyone listening right now, okay, if you're not into technical analysis, maybe this is what can spur you to take it upon yourself, take ownership for your investments and say, you know what? I understand some of the fundamentals here. And I really appreciate what these guys are putting out here with some of the fundamentals and why cryptocurrencies are such a disruptive form of technology and why it's so it will be interwoven into our everyday lives and why it's important. And I'm getting some of that from the podcast. But from a technical perspective, maybe this will pique your interest to start learning about it. So the first um, item that my brother brought up, uh, that the crypto br uh, bringer brought up, was that he wants to know what the hell is a simple moving average, right? So as the name implies, it's an average of something. So when we look at a price chart, okay, and it doesn't matter if you're looking at stocks or cryptos, and in this case, we're talking about cryptocurrencies. So one of the things you'll see on a chart, okay, on a chart, it's important to understand that when you're looking at a chart, it's, it's data, it's current data, and it's past data. And the reason that everything that we're talking about is relevant is because there's historical data that tells us it's relevant. We can use that historical data to tell us about what's currently going on and what may potentially happen. Okay. So when we're talking about a moving average, this is so simple, so simple, keeping it very simple. When you look at a price chart and you see the candlesticks, you know, on these candlesticks, they tell you the price action. Let's just, let's focus on a daily. We're just talking about a daily price chart. You're looking at how the price looks every day. Every candlestick, every single candlestick represents one day's of price action, okay? And then you see these lines on a chart and different chartists like different moving averages. And there's a lot of different um, simple moving averages that chartists tend to rely on. There's the 10, 20, 50, and 200. But what does that actually mean? Well, looking at a 10-day simple moving average, all it does is it takes the average price in the past 10 days and it plots a point on that line. So today, there'd be a line, there'd be a point on the line of the 10-day simple moving average that would express the average price in the past 10 days. If you went back, ten, if you went back 50 days ago on the chart, like if you looked at the chart and you scroll back 50 days at that point in time, that dot at that point in time on that um, line of the 10-day simple moving average, at that point in time, 50 days ago, it would have represented the past 10 days average price. That's all it's telling you. So the 200 simple moving average is literally today. Okay, today looking at the 200 simple moving average. Yes, it's a line. But the current point today in time is an average of the prior 200 days of price action. So based on what I just shared there, Crypto Bringer, what, uh, what's coming to your mind? Like, what are you thinking? Is this making sense? What questions do you have? So it, it does make sense. And you, you, you brought up the 10-day simple moving average, and you were saying if you looked back 50 days. Uh, so does that mean you'd see five plots on that line where you would see the average in the space of 10 day periods? You'd no, five different plots. No, 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 no. So what I'm saying is, so it's a good question. So what I'm saying is, let's say we went back, I'm actually going to give you a specific date just to be more helpful. Maybe this would be helpful. So let's say we went back approximately 39 days. Okay. 39 days would be what? September 1st. Okay. So let's say that we went to September 1st and we looked at the price of Bitcoin. I'm, I'm making up a number right now because I don't know what the price is. Let's say on September 1st, if we looked at a chart, 
the price of Bitcoin was $40,000, okay, $40,000. Well, there's a moving average, a 10-day simple moving average that's also plotted on that chart, right? On September 1st, the line is a certain value. So what I'm saying is on September 1st, 39 days ago, the 10-day simple moving average was the average price of the prior 10 days. So that would be August 31st through August 22nd. So August 22nd through August 31st, whatever the average price is between those 10 days, that would be the plot point on that line on September 1st. Is that helpful? Does that make sense? It, it is. I'm, I'm thinking okay. of things that I would see at work. So, you know, I can only liken it to what I see in my field. So I was thinking, okay, if, if we're looking at 50 days, I would see five plots on that line where I could understand where the average was at in 10 day cycles. But you're saying it's just the one specific plot and that's it. Yep. It's one specific point and it just represents the prior X days of average price. 10 day simple moving average, the prior 10 days average price. 50 day okay. moving average, simple moving average the average 50 days of price action. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So why, why do you think, why do you think it is more significant, um, big picture, to look at a 200 simple moving average versus a 10 day simple moving average? Any thoughts there? Well, for me, I would think it would have everything to do with keeping your eye on the bigger picture zooming out and taking a look how it's performed over the past 200 days versus seeing a macro perception of 10 days i like seeing mm -hmm. the 10 days just mm -hmm. to see i like seeing a short term just to see how it's been performing lately but when i start to get really upset <laughs> like i did uh over the summer uh-huh uh it for me it always helped zooming out to a year perspective i wasn't looking at smas i was just looking at how the specific uh Bitcoin or Matic or whomever, how they performed over the span of 365 days versus just a week or a day or yep. whatever. Yep, yep. I, you know, you and, and many others always say, zoom out, look at the larger picture, mm -hmm. see how it's performed. I'll actually, for folks that are beginners, uh, the thing that I found helpful was actually zooming out to all, looking at all for a specific token just to understand how it's performed since its inception into the marketplace when I really start to freak out about a price or get worried. The simple moving average, the SMA on things, I, I find it helpful. I, I, I like the 200 approach just to be able to, to see how it's performed over the longer period. I, I have been forcing myself to look at the longer perspective. I think that's one of the biggest growth points for me over the past year is zooming out. Yeah, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up because honestly, CryptoBringer, I think most people struggle with that. Like it, most people, I think most people are at some point when they're immature within investing in general and within cryptocurrencies, they think they can outsmart the market and they think they know what's going on. And what they don't realize is you're, you're in a pool, okay? You're in a pool of players and a lot of them are institutional investors. You know, you're, 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 you're uh, buying and selling with bots, algorithms, people, you know, those algorithms and those veteran uh, TA people, they will all outsmart you. So you have to humble yourself. And the best thing you can do is dollar cost average and kind of zoom out and look at the chart. And so when we talk about simple moving well, let's, averages, let's, let's, let's pause there a second. Because sure, you, sure, sure. You're mentioning something there that, you know, it might seem like it's basic knowledge to you, but to a goof like me, uh -huh. dollar cost averaging, I, I have no idea. I, I think I might know, but I, I really don't. What do you mean by dollar cost averaging when you're when you're figuring these things out? Ah, great question. There are oh, I know. Uh, it is a no, it's a great question because <laughs> the reason the reason I seriously say that is because there are certain things I take for granted that I just assume certain people know, but without actually explaining what it means, you may not necessarily know what it means. So dollar cost averaging, all it literally means is averaging into the price over time, meaning scaling mm -hmm. in, meaning, okay. you know, so it's another ten, term for scaling in. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's another, yeah, it's another, so, so meaning this, so just saying, I'll give you an example. Hmm. Um, it would be the first of every month 
putting $50 into a project or every other, every Monday, every Monday you put $10 in dollar cost average every Monday, every Monday, every Monday, every Monday, every Monday, you're not even looking at the price. You're just dollar cost averaging in. That's what it means. Dollar cost averaging in just means scaling in. You're not even paying never, attention. I would to the never price. have known that. I, I, I yep. would have thought you were averaging out your investments to understand the average price you invested at or some BS nope. like that. It's so simple. It's so simple. It's just so scaling to me, in. It's just, to me, it's it's scaling in and it's a, it's a normal recurring deposit into yes. your account. And historically, and historically, and I don't have anything in front of me to give you specific numbers or a specific website to go to, but I do know I've read and looked at data that suggests that for the average retail investor, which would be mo which would be the people listening to this, honestly, for the average retail investor, the best thing you can do is again, don't overthink it, don't overcomplicate your life. Don't try to think that you can guess the highs and the lows. Oh, Literally no. every yep, every week, every month, every other week, every paycheck, you get paid twice a week. Don't even look at the price. Just put 20 bucks in or 30 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever you can afford and don't even pay attention to it. The only time that isn't smart to quote unquote dollar cost average in is if the market has already gotten to a euphoric top and we're going to be in a massive bear market with, like what I believe will happen in 2022 going into 2023. That's a time where you don't want to dollar cost average in. You actually want to have scaled out. But in a time like this, you just want to set it. It, it isn't really set it and forget it. I, I kind of hate that term, but it's it's dollar cost averaging in, well, um, not paying honest, attention to the price. that's what we've done. The crypto yeah. wave and I, that's what we've done. We've just deposited and, and forgotten. I mean... Yeah, the crypto, like right now, unfortunately, we haven't been able to invest in the market lately. Uh, crypto Babe, as you know, had surgery recently, so we've been diverting funds towards the surgery fund. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. there, there is no extra money. But I, we, that's what we were doing. We were doing it. So without realizing it, we were dollar cost averaging because we were depositing every paycheck. Was what we were doing. Yep, and that is again the smartest thing that you can do even without realizing it that's the most diligent and smartest thing to do it's what i stressed to dad i said to dad i just said look you he came up with a figure i think it was 30 dollars, and the most i helped him with was i said look just split it up either 50 50 between bitcoin and ethereum or at this point just do bitcoin but whatever the case is dad don't even pay attention like based on your investment philosophy you're not a day trader like just put your money in and not don't even think about it once a month but I wanted to, something we were talking about real quick, because I didn't want to lose track of this, and it kind of delves into the second point. I wanted to, again, mention something about moving averages because it gets into our next topic. The reason that it is so significant to look at moving averages and understand the differentials between smaller moving averages, like 10-day, and larger, like 200, is you really need to understand what it means when price, okay, those candlesticks, when you look at, again, we're just focusing on a daily chart, just to keep things simple. You can look at charts on all types of time frames, but let's keep it simple and say every candlestick is a day. What does it mean when price is above the 10 day simple moving average? Well, I mean, there's a lot of strength. It means that the current price action is higher. Okay, it's higher. Today's price is higher than it's been over the average 10 days. Now, when it starts to begin to when there's weakness in the chart, when the, when the price, when those candlesticks came with the price action, it begins to close below the 10 day. What we're saying is today's price is less than it's been in the average 10 days. Then it goes below the 50 day simple moving average. Okay, well, that's not good because now you're telling me today's price is less than the average 50 prior 50 days of price action. And when it starts going below the 200, that's significant. That's something okay, so you really got to watch out for. And hold, I know where you're going with this, but give yeah. me one second. When prices start to close below the 200 simple moving average, huge red flag, caution flag, because now what you're saying is in layman's terms, you're saying today's price is lower then it's been in the past 200 days on average. There's a lot more weakness in that signal, in that price action being below the 200 simple moving average than being below the 10 day. I mean, being below, low, being below the 10 day simple moving average is just saying, you know, the current price is less than the prior 10 days, you know, no big deal. But once you start getting into the 50 and 200, now there's a lot of weakness because you're saying the current price is less than the average of the prior 50 or 200 days. That's, that's, that's a lot of price weakness. So go ahead, what were you gonna say? So does that then lead us into the, the we were going to discuss yes. Golden Cross? Yes, next. that's where now, I was going I, with this. Yeah, I've heard two different terms. I hear Golden Cross and then 
you or someone else mentioned a different type of cross, like a death cross or whatever. Ooh, the death was, cross, brother. <laughs> they were talking about that Ooh. with Big Wayne or someone over the summer. I was like, ah, oh, God, what is this? The Golden Cross sounds like the Golden Cross sounds like uh, rainbows and unicorns, and we're all going to be rich. And the Death Cross sounds like I just want to vomit, and we're yeah, all no, die. I, that's what I felt yeah. like doing. I, yeah. I looked, I looked yeah. at Crypto Babe when she came back from. <laughs> and I, I want to throw up now. And she goes, well, "Why?" And I, I pulled up our account so she could look at. It. She goes, "Just, just put it away." <laughs> First words out of her mouth were. What does your brother say? He better be right. <laughs> and I go, ah, uh, the emotional, have, the emotional retail investor. Feet. Yeah, the emotional, the emotional retail feet. roller coaster. You know what though? In all seriousness, Crypto Bringer, having been through this cycle one time now, okay, this is your first full, first partial cycle, really, first partial well, cycle. I, I was watching the market before I ever invested. Yeah, in but you're invested. For years. But yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah. be honest, without going into detail, you're invested now. I mean, you're invested yeah. now, so. So having gone through this is going to benefit you tremendously over the next two, three, oh, four, absolutely. five, six, seven years. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, and and I was there. I was there with you years and years ago uh, feeling that way. I know how it feels. And I laugh, I laugh uh, kiddingly, but not at you, but with you because I, I, I really understand where you're coming from. And so there's this thing that you brought up about a golden cross and, a, and even a death cross. And so what does it actually mean? Yeah. Well, if you, yeah, if you keep in mind what I just talked about, what I, and there's a reason that I spoke to this because it transitions perfectly into this. I spoke to price, price action, candlesticks, being below certain key moving averages, a 10, 50, and 200, and what that actually means. Right. Well, now what happens is when you have moving averages cross below certain moving averages. So, for example, I'll give you uh, one example, and this is actually the, the, the death cross. Okay, this is the death cross uh, is when if you're looking at a daily chart, you could actually look at a weekly or a 12 hour. You could look at whatever chart you want. But typically investors, what they do is technical analysts will look at the daily for this. So a death chart is when the 50 day simple moving average crosses below the 200 simple simple uh, 200 day simple moving average so what does that actually mean well what it means is this is bad this is very bad because what it means is the prior 50 days average price is less than the prior 200 days average price so what oh, yeah, it means that would make me vomit and yeah. and what it what right. it further means is the more current price action okay the more current 50 days okay i'm you can't see me i'm i'm, I'm raising my hands in the air but you can't see me you're not so, telling at all so yeah. the so the most current price action of 50 days it's less than 200 days of average price so there's more weakness today okay there's more weakness today than there's historically been in the past if that makes sense so it's 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 something that all chartists look at so not only is it fundamentally and intuitively a bearish signal, a bad signal in price action, but now on top of it, historically it says such, and because of that, you have technical analysts buying and selling based on that. So now everybody's sort of playing into that, so it's a very bad thing. That's what a death cross is. Did, that, did the death cross make sense? It does. So then okay. is the golden cross the exact flip of that? You are correct. So the golden cross is where the 50-day simple moving average crosses above the 200 simple moving average. So in layman's terms, what it means is more current price action, the past 50 days of average price action, is more bullish. It's higher in price. It's higher in price value than the prior 200 days historical price action. So in the prior 50 days, what we're getting to see is prices going up to like $100. And in the prior 200 days, maybe the average price was like $70. And so because the more current 50 days are like more towards 100 and the prior 200 days are more towards like 70 or 50, now the moving average, those plotted points are going up in value and going above the 200 simple moving average. The last thing I want to uh, say and then pause on here to see if this is making sense is the other thing you want to see with the golden cross, ideally, is you want to see the 200 simple moving average not only is the 500, or excuse me, the 500, wow, that's a high moving average. Not only is the 50 simple moving average curling up, 
But you also want to see the 200 simple moving average curl up, like up the chart. You want to see them both curl up because sometimes you can get a fake out. Sometimes you can get the 50 cross above the 200. But if the 200 is sort of curling down and the price action is just not good and it's going more uh, down, negative, lower in value, you, you can get fake outs. There is no 100% guarantee when you're looking at anything. And that goes for anything as a, as a, I'm, I'm a, I am a data analyst by nature as an actuary. So whenever you're analyzing data, there's no 100% guarantee with anything. So there are certain particulars you pay attention to with a golden or uh, death cross that, that would lead you to suspect there's a higher probability that it could be a fake out or a true golden or death cross. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, it does, so and I, I would like okay. to interject here that uh, you can tell when good old CBG gets excited <laughs> about talking about numbers. Yeah, I love uh, numbers. He he <laughs> he starts talking faster. It's like <laughs> he he just goes into you know just blah, 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 it just goes off. <laughs> It's the same way that I talk with people about fantasy football. Yeah. And I go off on yep. stats on players, or yep. if I'm talking about beer, or I'm talking about football in general, mm -hmm. I understand it. It was really funny there. I almost interjected and said, whoa, 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 CBG, let's slow it down a little bit. <laughs> because I don't know if anyone else is like me, but I will typically listen to the old CBG podcast on my drive into work. So... <laughs> <laughs> During that 30-ish or so minute drive, I am listening <laughs> at 6.30 in the morning. I'm listening on the drive-in, and uh, yeah, sometimes I, I will have to hit pause and go back 30 seconds just so I can uh, understand what the heck he's talking about, because he gets a little excited. I do, and, I do. And talks, but that's, that's yeah. good, because he's passionate in this space. I can tell you from, from experience... <laughs> He's passionate in the space. Now, I would like to say that, you know, CBG said in his most recent podcast, which I am only 15 or 20 minutes into at this point, thanks to uh, my cardio workout this afternoon, uh, he said that we've known each other all our lives. That's not technically true. Oh, God. I've known uh, CBG for most of my life, but yeah. I am the elder. He did yes. not exist for a <laughs> Yes, technicality, asshole. But I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I digress. So uh, the next topic, and, and there's actually, we have four topics to discuss. We've known our... each other since the days of Tecmo <laughs> Super Bowl to NFL mm. Blitz to Nerf Wars to Air <laughs> Hockey. We've known each other all our lives. Screw champ. you. Yeah, 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 screw you. I can't beat you at Tecmo. You yeah, that's right. Anyway. I am the king of Tecmo yeah, uh, yeah. Super Bowl. If anybody wants to ever challenge me in that for an online tournament, I am the king at that. I just need the San Francisco 49ers. Wow, he doesn't even want Bo Jackson. He want <laughs> no, San Francisco Adidas. 49ers. All right. Um, so I know we have four items on this outline, and we've, we've hit two of them, but yes, I'm sir. actually going to interject the fifth. Oh, which you don't know about cripes so. is this at the end or are we doing this right now no it'll be item number five so oh, God. on the third item we have price indicators price indicators yes so why do we look at these with a price chart what, what, what is going on with these things this is a very good question so when you it look at be. a price you came up with it <laughs> i it is a very good question because i actually edited the outline and, and put this one in there so yeah it is a very good question so uh, the reason that we look at price indicators, so the most common thing that people look at when they look at a price chart is the actual price action. You know, what's a, what's a candlestick? What does it represent? It's price action within, again, we're just talking about a daily chart. So candlesticks represent price action within the chart. And then, you know, the most common thing that you plot on a price chart are moving averages. We just talked about simple moving averages. So... There are simple moving averages. There are other things you can plot on the chart, but let's just stick with the fact that you know it's mostly just price action. So there are also things called price indicators. So what you can use the price indicators for, again, I want to stress this. I stress this so many times. Uh, I, it's countless at this point, which is that I, as a data scientist, can evaluate uh, a data analyst can evaluate the data, and all I can do is make informed decisions and give you probabilistic statements regarding current and future price action. There's a no 100% certainty 
regarding what the price is going to do. All I can do is use the historical data and current price action, all these things, and tell you what, what is most and least likely. Sometimes it plays out in the opposite direction. So where the price indicators come in is it's another data point. Again, I always refer to having multiple data points. Well, price indicators are another data point. And typically what the price indicators do, if you know how to read them, and common ones are MACD, RSI, Relative Strength Index, Stochastic, RSI. These are common price indicators. And what they do is they give you a indication in terms of the strength of certain price movements and momentum. So really what I personally would think of when I think of most price indicators, most, is strength and momentum. And so ideally, when you're looking at a chart, if you have a bullish thesis and you're looking at the price chart, you also want those momentum and those strength indicators to tell you the same thing price is telling you. If a momentum or strength indicator is telling you something opposite of what the price is telling you, that's a caution flag. It's not a guarantee for anything, but it's a caution flag. So you can use these price indicators in conjunction with the price chart to help to lend credence to whatever narrative or thesis you're coming up with in terms of future current and future price direction. Did that make sense? <laughs> I am, it, it does. It, that one, it does. I, I would like to point out, however, the MACD. Why does that sound like a hip-hop artist from the 80s? <laughs> Good old MACD. 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 Well, I'm you thinking said. of macking it. That's what I'm thinking of. That's mm -hmm. like an old school term. Isn't macking it, an old school term? Look, look, this is going to get in the fashion. Like, it's the same. No, macking is a sexual term, isn't it? Macking it? Yeah. But that, I was that, macking that, it? That, yeah, but that, I don't, are you using that right now? I was macking that. I was macking No, that. that's not how it was. Yeah, I was macking that. That's like a sexual term. I don't know. It might be back in the 80s or 90s, but I think that's a, I think no, that that's is, a, that is an absolute terrible <laughs> use of that word. Like, I was macking that. No, dude. No, no. I was tapping that. Like, and, and Oh, tapping that. that, that. That's a, yeah, tapping it is very common. Yeah, I was tapping that. I, but I tapped that. And, and I would the say Mac that Daddy. guys, guys would say that women would not i have no idea how these terms came up it's the macd the macd i don't know yeah it sounds what... like a hip-hop artist yeah well i mean it could be i don't know how the hell these names come up like some people some people in all in all seriousness some people get way into the weeds they're like well where did this come from and what does it stand for who cares what I can tell you is historically what the significance of it is. I don't give a fuck what, where it came from or how the name came up. Just like understand that this is, this is a significant price indicator most technical analysts look at and you can use it in conjunction with price action to tell a story. When you view a chart, when you're viewing data, when you're looking at moving averages, golden crosses and death crosses, price indicators like MACDs and RSIs, and the next thing we're going to talk about, all it is is it's creating a picture for you. That's all it's doing. It's creating a story. You're creating a story in terms of uh, what's going to happen, you know, what's, what's most likely going to happen, and you know, what's least likely going to happen. Again, no guarantees, but that's the whole part. The whole point is a data analyst. That's what you're doing. You're using all this information to tell a story. Okay. All right. I like so telling stories. Well, I got plenty of stories. I just—I know you have today. plenty of stories. You have a lot more exciting stories than I have. Well, I could talk. I could, yeah. Anyway, uh, what, what, we'll move on to the fourth item, which is the wick off, whack off, jack off chart price patterns. <laughs> it's wike off. Wike off, sure. Yeah. Every time I hear this, I'm like, this, shit off. this is so stupid. Obviously, it had to be the guy that came up with it, but. I, I just feel bad for that name. It's like our last name. People make fun of it all the time. So, like, yeah, this one, this one has us beat. So, what, what, what are these, and why are they important? Yeah. So, Crypto Bringer, the way he had the outline was he said Wyckoff chart and what you know pattern. What, what, why are these, and what are they important? So, the tweak I wanted to make was just looking at chart patterns and why they're important because. The reason that my brother had Wyckoff in there, Wyckoff, Whackoff, whatever it's called, 
is because for those who were here, jack off, that's right. For those who were here in the summer, you can remember all of the fear mongering huh. that was going on and YouTube videos that were a lot really clickbait. Came out of nowhere, it yeah, was super ridiculous. I, unsub- I actually, yeah, I unsubscribed to a couple channels because I I got annoyed. But the whole point was, you know, there was a lot of talk about this this Wyckoff pattern, and so people didn't understand what it was, and you had people going on YouTube explaining it and blah 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 blah. And so I'm not. Let me just say this. I am not a Wyckoff chart pattern expert. I'm not going to sit here. Actually, I'm standing just like I was on my prior podcast. I said I'm actually standing right now, but I'm not going to stand here and pretend to explain to you exactly what a Wyckoff pattern is. I know the basic premise. The basic premise is it's a historical pattern and the way it plays out is smart investors benefit from it and ignorant retail investors lose out on it. And what happens is the smart uh, technical analysts that benefit from this pattern when it plays out are buying in when prices are low and people are panic selling and they're selling out when the prices become overextended and allowing retail investors to buy. And then as the price comes down, as the, as the other investors are selling off, they're buying in when prices get low again. So it's, it's the, the more important thing that I want to point out here is what are chart patterns and why are the price patterns or chart patterns? Why do they exist and why are they important? Again, take a step back. Whether you follow me on Twitter at Crypto Bull God and you see me tweet about a bear flag or a bull flag or a cup and handle or an ascending triangle or a descending triangle, ask yourself these, this question. How is he drawing this? And why is this even valid? Well, the reason I'm able to draw this pattern and validate it is because historically, over time, okay, when you evaluate price data, these patterns show up. And when they show up within a chart, there's a more likely, there's a higher likelihood that price moves in a certain direction. So in the event that when you have, for example, I have tweeted relentlessly about a cup and handle formation on both one Harmony and H bar Hedera Hashgraph. When a, when a formation shows up as a cup and handle, it historically has led to massive upside. Okay, now it's not a guarantee. Again, it's not a guarantee. But what you have to understand is there are certain price patterns that historically they show up in the data. They show up in the data. And so you buy and sell based on the likelihood of where the price is going to go. Don't forget what's baked into the price action are us. It's us. It's the people buying and selling. It's human emotion. It's human behavior. We are the ones. Whether or not there are bots and algorithms and computers buying and selling this stuff, it doesn't matter. We are the ones. We are the people. We are the ones who created these price patterns, okay, that historically over time have been validated by moving in certain likely directions. That's really why price patterns are important. When they show up, you see a Wyckoff pattern, more than likely, a Wyckoff pattern is going to show up. You see a head and shoulders pattern, more than likely, a head and shoulders pattern is going to play out. So you just have to pay attention to these things. Is that crypto bringer? Does that make sense? Am I making sense right now? Because I feel like intuitively that should uh, should hang together and resonate with people. It, it it does make sense. I will have to listen to this podcast at that specific section again because there was a lot of good information in there for me to understand later. But yes, it does. It, it does intuitively make sense. And here here's really the bonus uh, part to the outline that CBG here doesn't really know about. <clears throat> so this is gonna be interesting. It, yeah, it, it it will be because it's we didn't we didn't pregame this. So what, wait, we were what, supposed to pregame before the podcast? Yeah, well, I wasn't drinking before the podcast. I didn't know we were supposed to pregame. Hold on, let me pause this. Hold on, let me sure. get it. Let me. <laughs> I, I mean, I, yeah. by the way, those pumpkin margaritas. For those who haven't had a pumpkin margarita, uh, Total Wine they put out is some ingredients for a pumpkin margarita. It's a. By the way, Crypto Bringer, the um, churro, 
the churro. You know I can't roll my R's. The churro, no, 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 uh, tequila, the pumpkin vodka, the orange liqueur, a little lime juice, and if you want agave nectar, although that's sweet enough, you can just put a little agave in there. You shake that shit up. You pour that in a glass. Now I didn't do the cinnamon sugar rim, but that is a good pumpkin margarita let me tell you that was very good had that yesterday but anyway where were we going with this we got a fifth bonus section i have no idea what you're going to bring up right now what you got okay so i i consistently see charts and, and actually you posted something about this on october 8th i believe it was involving one in h bar okay uh, you're tweeting about price action but you're but you're also pointing the stuff at the bottom of the chart uh vol it's called volume what, what is this and why is this important? I know volume is important, but why is this important and what why is it relating to the top of the chart as well with, with, with the red and the greens? Please Vo me. Volume and weight training is very important. I don't know if you know it that. It is. It is. It is. I'm presently <laughs> on uh, a Titan cycle, I believe is what the workout's called. That's what's called Titan. I don't look like a Titan, but I, you know, I'm, I, I do well on the workout. Now, Crypto Bringer, this is actually, you're asking a very, very good question that I don't think most people really have a firm grasp or understand. And that it's is. Very frustrating seeing this stuff and not knowing. So, yeah. Yes, yes. It's the concept and understanding and significance of volume within a chart. So, at its most basic fundamental level, what is volume when you're looking at it? So, when I pull up a price chart right now, um, you know, I'm looking at. I'm just staring right now at a chart I had tweeted about uh, yesterday on Friday. One, Harmony, USD, it had broken out to a brand new all-time high. And it reached up to uh, essentially, I don't know, it reached up to, we're going to call, well, it was over 25 cents. So close to 26, but 25 cents. But if you look at the volume, the volume is significant. So what does that actually mean? Well, what it means is, when you're looking at a breakout, okay, when you're looking at prices going, uh, in this case, it's creating a new all-time high, and you see a lot of volume, it, it's a lot, it puts much more significance behind the price action, just like if it creates a new all-time low and there's a lot of volume and there's a huge red candle, you want to express a lot more caution when there's a lot of volume. What it means, what it means in layman's terms, is that there's a lot more money exchanging hands. There's a lot more, there's a lot more uh, dollar bills exchanging value within that cryptocurrency project to, to comprise that price action versus if it broke out to like sometimes, like sometimes, for instance, when Bitcoin was uh, hovering around 30,000 and it dipped down to 28 or 29 and there was low volume, what it meant is there wasn't a lot of significant money going into the price action going down there just wasn't a lot of price entering to drive the price down and a lot of the times what you'll see is in a volatile market like this you'll see a huge wick okay wick expresses volatility right the price goes all the way down to a certain level and retraces up when there's a lot of volume that comes into the market what happens is there's a lot of buyers there's a lot of people buying up, buying up, buying up. There's money going into the price and it drives the volume. And that's when you see the huge price wicks go into Bitcoin because essentially what the buyers are saying is we're creating a floor. The price, it's like from, uh, it's no, it's, ac it's actually like Captain Picard uh, from Star Trek. <laughs> the line shall be drawn this far and no farther. Like the, the buyers are saying, look, you might drive us down to 28,600 or 28,800, but there are so many motherfucking buyers at that level. They're buying it up, buying it up, buying it up, and it causes the price to wick up, okay, go way up and recover in price, and it increases the volume. There's more significance behind the price action. So when more money, when more money is exchanging hands between buyers and sellers, that's what increases the volume and lends itself to a more creditable, credible uh, price move. D does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. Okay. I, I okay. was just trying okay. to correlate the top and the bottom all the time. And I, okay. and I thought I understood it. And in a really freakish way, I guess I did. Right. Uh, but I, I, I didn't. And I didn't want to buy too much into my half-ass guess without a... 
Well, and you know, one <laughs> of the things, yeah, and one of the things you're probably finding the more I'm explaining some of this stuff is it's it's actually not overcomplicated. If it's I'm not, it's kind of intuitive if you really think about it. Yeah, and ask questions. <laughs> yeah, if I'm actually doing, if I'm doing a good job, if I'm doing a good job of explaining this, what should hit home for you and everyone listening. Is this actually isn't overly complicated. Like, these are pretty basic concepts. It's not really that complicated. So volume, why is it significant? Well, it's just the amount of money, this amount of inflow and outflow going into a crypto asset. So the more of it that it is, there is, it drives up the volume, and it states that there's more significance behind the price action. If there's more money going in and out versus less, it's saying that there's more credibility behind that move. That's all it's saying. Yeah, I, I would like to point out, and that's yeah. no, good. Thank you. I, I want to point out though that you <laughs> okay. uh, did not adequately uh, quote Captain Picard. That was an incorrect quote. Wait, what? Wait, hold on. Let me. Wait, what was the correct quote? It is the line must be drawn here. The yeah. line must be drawn here. This far and no farther. Yeah, uh, that's what... this far, no further. There is no, no further. Yeah, yes. no. yeah. He yeah, was, yeah. he was quite upset at that point. He was yeah. not a fan of the board. I tried to use that clip in a YouTube video, and YouTube was all dickish yeah, and censored said, me. Yeah. yeah, it really pissed me off. I yeah. yeah. yeah that is yeah. one. That is one dude I like to meet is Patrick Stewart. He just seems Patrick like Stewart. Yeah, I'm trying to think of famous people I'd like to meet. Patrick Stewart would be way up there. He'd be way yeah. up there. Yeah, he seems like a really cool guy. Just because both of us are such Star Trek: The Next Generation fans um, and X Men fans and and X Men fans, yeah, and X Men fans. But Star Trek The Next Generation, I mean, that's one of my all-time favorite TV shows. There's, I mean, I just... He's still really good in Picard, too. Like, he is... He's good. And I I have not... Uh, I think I saw, like, the first episode or two, and I actually have CBS. I'm subscribed to it, but I haven't watched any of the other episodes, so... You need to make it a point. The new show is coming out soon. Did Riker... Did Riker come on that show? Any of the old... How much of the old cast I look, came on I don't. I don't want to... I don't want to spoil it. You need right. to watch it, and then right. we can discuss it. And I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it for any potential listeners out there that yeah. want yeah. to watch it. Yeah. Because there is, there is once again, uh, there, there, there's some stuff that Paramount, they last second planning and that sort of thing led to some terribleness in the in the season finale. So that can be discussed at a later time. And I think you'll understand it when you see the episode. So get caught up. Uh, uh, okay. Otherwise, right. it's a good. It, it was a good story. I, I didn't expect it to uh, go in the way it did, but it did, and I, I and I liked it. Okay. Uh, it had my wife in tears in the final episode. Uh, mm. I I I actually uh, I started to well up as well, but it was good. Wait, how many seasons were there? There's only one season so far. Oh but shit! Oh okay. They they just recorded. They I think they they were making season two and three concurrently. Can you just tell me one thing? Hmm. Picard doesn't die, does he? I'm not telling you anything. Son of a bitch! Show. If they kill Captain Picard, I I that's like to me. If they kill off Captain Picard, that's like killing Optimus Prime in the Transformers movie. <laughs> Fuck that, that show, and I'm never time. watching it again. You cried in that scene. <laughs> Mom was so horrified. I, I just sat there. I didn't know what to do. What are you talking about? I wasn't even born. I watched that in the 90s. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, I, shut up. I, I didn't want <laughs> Yeah, Mom took us there. I was so stoked. I was so jacked, and... Yeah. And by the way, Metroplex never even transformed. They just called it Autobot City, <laughs> which was BS. <laughs> yes, I know that technically he transformed in a Japanese show before the movie came out. <laughs> I, I'm a geek. I know. Yada, yada. But that was traumatizing to us. My, my... <laughs> You know, you were you were what you were. Uh, no, no, no. Let's not old. go. With, let's not go with ages because then that gives away. No, no. no let's not go with ages because that gives away our age, and I'm not ready to give away my age because you know. Let's let's let's, well, let's not do that. that. Part out. Let's not. Yeah. Let's let's not do that. Uh, but real quick, real quick, before we close out the podcast, just bringing yeah. this back to Bitcoin for a second, I just want everyone to think for a second, and, and really, I mean this. Um, I want you to think about how you felt a couple months ago in July, okay? When Bitcoin was hovering around that $29,000, $30,000 mark, and there were several people out there Ooh. saying 
there were saying, like myself, that we had bottomed. And right now, I'm looking at the price, and we're up 2% today. Bitcoin is at 55000 Mark my words, crypto bringer. Mark my words. I feel uber confident that Bitcoin is going to, at the very least, challenge its prior all-time all cycle high. It's like 64000 65000 I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if this month we don't see 70000 Just, Just... Write it down. Mark it down. I would not be surprised if we don't touch 70000 And if you listen to my last podcast, if you had the opportunity, I've spoken to the rule of sevens. And I said, you hit seven, it's likely 10. You hit 70 cents, it's likely a dollar. You hit $70,000, we are most likely hitting $100,000. It's a basic premise within TA. It's just human emotion. You're so close to that figure. So once we hit $70,000, look out for that figure. It is Almost, and it's not a guaranteed, but in my mind, it's a done deal. A hundred thousand is right around the corner, so just uh, keep that in mind. And my 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 belief, my belief, and I've stated this, is that we are going significantly higher than a hundred thousand this year. So just you will see true euphoria soon, and this is why having a scale out uh, investment approach is critical. Because you can stare at your portfolio and it could be $100,000 or $10,000. But if you don't start to sell, you're not going to realize that gain. So have an investment scale out strategy because these next couple months are going to be epically euphoric. Mark my words. Sorry, I'm just looking at the price action right now. Hey, by the, X, by the way, XRP is up 10%. There you go. Yeah, I wish I could do something about it. <laughs> we have uphold. Got uphold. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I, I, yeah. <laughs> Hey, by the way, by the way, it is late here on the East Coast. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Uh, the crypto bull goddess hasn't eaten dinner, so I think we're, <laughs> I think we're gonna close out this podcast and uh, do something for dinner. I don't know what we're doing. I think we're making a simple salad. But all right. So on that note, uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. That does it for another episode of the Crypto Bros Podcast. We're here to educate you on all things crypto, keep things very, very light, and to motivate you so that you can capture this generational wealth transfer opportunity, locking in those gains in this exciting world of cryptocurrencies. So until next time, I am the Crypto Bull God. And I am the Crypto Bringer. Ooh.